So the next debut, the first season, my all-time favorite TGIF show, Step by Step. <laughs> okay. A, I, why is it your favorite? I have to, I have to um, know why it's your favorite. Next debut, the first season, my all-time favorite TGIF show, Step by Step. <laughs> okay. A, I, why is it your favorite? I have to, I have to um, know why it's your favorite. Well. Don't say Suzanne Summer. No, it wasn't Suzanne Summer. So for anybody who's never heard of it, it was like a modern-day Brady Bunch. It was the daughters, wasn't it? Uh, I, no, I don't think so. No, um, okay. Uh, no, I'll, I'll tell you why. I think because I was, for some weird reason at that age, I was a big fan of Dallas. And Patrick Duffy, who played Bobby Ewing, oh. played the father, Frank Lambert. And he married uh, Suzanne Summers from Three's Company. They actually met, like, they were on a vacation, like, in the Caribbean or somewhere in, in some, like, tropical place. And they ended up getting married after not meeting that. You know, they only met each other on the vacation. Right, Cut because didn't, it, didn't I, felt, I felt like the kids didn't meet until, the, like, the wedding. Or uh, something like no. that, or the way they talked about it. It, after. it was after. Like, they had, like, a dinner at the house that yeah. would be their house, and that's how they met. And that's how they, okay. Yeah. So she had, let's see, she had three kids. She had Dana. They were the Fosters. Dana Foster, who, Stacy Keenan from My Two Dads, if you remember that show, mm -hmm. she was the daughter. Uh, and then they had Karen Foster, played by Angela Watson, she was like the pretty girl. She oh, was yeah. an aspiring yeah, model. Yeah, yeah. She was really ditzy, though. That's okay. Yeah. And then <laughs> the youngest son was Mark Foster, played by Christopher Castile. And he was like the nerdy dude who was allergic to everything yeah. and always clumsy, but very smart. Frank, Bobby Ewing. What did he do? He was like in construction work. He was in construction, like yeah. He also had three kids. His oldest son was JT. J.T. Lambert, he was like a slacker, and he he started out into sports, but then later he hates sports, which didn't make any sense. Yeah, I, I didn't really like that character. You didn't like J.T.? I didn't like J.T. He was, he was kind was, of a bully, though, wasn't he? He was. Like, throughout with everybody, he was kind of a bully, and just, I don't know. He, again, some of these characters, like, the shows are great, but mm -hmm. some characters just rubbed me the wrong way, and he was one of those. Because he always picked on, on Mark, right? The Suzanne Summers, yep. the youngest son. He always picked on him, and he always butted heads with, with Dana, the... Suzanne Summers' oldest, oldest daughter, one, yeah. Because yeah. I always like, even though I was young when it came out, I was always like, are they going to end up together? That's going to be weird. Kind of like the uh, whole uh, Brady Bunch thing. Yeah. 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 And then uh, Frank's middle daughter was Alicia Al Lambert, who she was, was the one a that tomboy. was in the sports. She was a tomboy, yeah. Yeah, she was yeah. really into sports. Yeah, and she hated her new family. She hated them all. She always talked smack about, about Karen being dumb. Yeah, but she eventually she she softened up to them as the series went on, and she she kind of became more feminine. Because that was I felt like that was the whole episode that she went to the two older the two other girls yeah, to, to get help a her because because she likes a boy. Yeah, and they were like, "How do I how do I dress?" Because she didn't know all she had were hats and like overalls and football jerseys and stuff yeah. like that. And then Frank's youngest son was Brendan, played by Josh Byrne, and he was like a shy, timid kid. He was real sensitive, if I remember right. And he really liked having the new family because I believe the mother the mother ran off. I know Suzanne Summers, her husband died. Yeah. And I think Frank's wife ran off or something, just abandoned them. Yeah, he, he really liked the whole idea yeah. of having yeah. a family. But then I, he seems very forgettable, though. He was like one of those that even, even in the shows, he was just there. Well, because they wrote him off towards the end. Did they? They did. He was another Judy Winslow. Yeah, they wrote Man, him off. He got Judy they, Winslow. Yeah. They wrote him off because in the last like two seasons, Frank and um, Carol have a kid, a little baby named Lily, a daughter. I remember that. Yeah. So what's funny is that like the second to the last season they have her, she's a baby. Then the final season on CBS, isn't they she, uh, isn't she like a toddler? Well, it's called it's a term called Sorsa. So they source at her. That stands for soap opera rapid aging syndrome. Because I remember, yeah. didn't she always have like really, really blonde hair and pigtails, pigtails yeah. all the time? See, yeah. I, I remember her 
being that age. I don't remember yeah. her ever being a baby. Because it was one season, and then the next season, she's like five years old. Wow. And she was like a genius or something. You remember that? She was really yeah, smart. Yeah, really smart. Like, not just smart, like straight up genius level and doing all kinds of... Yeah, it, it was strange. It was strange. But she was um, played by Emily May Young, and she was one of those little Welch's kids who would drink the juice. You know, Welch's grape juice. Yeah. Yeah, yeah that's why I remember her, mm -hmm. too. But, yeah, she was... She came out of nowhere, man. She did. It was weird. <laughs> it was towards the end of the run. It's like, it's like they were just trying new things yeah. to see what they could do. So then Frank had a nephew named Cody, who was played by Sasha Mitchell, who was also in Dallas. Another reason why I like the show. He was J.R. Ewing's illegitimate son, James Beaumont. I never realized he was in Dallas. He was, yeah. That's where he started. And then he was like in... Uh, not Bloodsport, because that was Van Dam. He might have been in one of the later American Ninja, American Ninjas, or he was in one of those martial arts movies, either right before this or around that time, a little afterwards. Hmm. So he was like the the goofy valley surfer dude. Yeah, he had a catchphrase too. I just can't think. Oh, of it. he did. Well, he'd what always be it? like, "Sure." Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so he always, yeah, he, he was. He was kind of lived in a van. He lived in the van in their parking yeah. lot. Yeah. He was cool though, because they always call him Cody Man. Yeah, like that. He's like, the, yeah, he was like, dude. Well, the kid, the kids always called him Cody Man. Yeah, and I, I don't even remember how he came to live with them. Um, I don't. But remember I, I, I remember Frank like hated him. Did he? He just thought I thought he just thought he was, was like irresponsible. Yeah. yeah, but he ended up working for him. Yeah, he did. Still living in the van. I remember there was an episode where, I guess one of the no, oh, it was him and Frank. They were in a bar. And like some big biker dudes were given given troubled either to Suzanne Summers or the kids, and and they were like playing pool, and then him and and Frank end up getting a fight with the with the with the bikers, and Cody bust out like he got the the cue stick and he's all doing some martial arts stuff, and then but then he ended it with like a like that, that kind of <laughs> oh, yeah. and he's like yeah, and then they beat the crud out of those. So I bikers. think I remember that episode, but I also feel like there's a similar episode <laughs> just like that. In Family Matters, where Urkel and Carl get in a fight in really? a bar, some biker bar, and the same thing, Urkel like had learned karate or something. You know, I bet you Urkel probably accidentally knocks over a row of motorcycles or something to start yeah. to fight. That makes sense. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's and you were saying, you know, the youngest son got written out of the show. Do you remember in the first season, Suzanne Summers, her mother and her sister? Worked with her because she was a beautician and she had like a, a salon house. in the house. Yeah, 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 yeah. And they were written out of that first episode. I mean, out of the first were season. They? Yeah, the second season, they're gone. I don't even think they mentioned them after that first season. Oh, because I feel like that, the, the woman from, what is the one that Charlie Sheen was in on CBS that he got written out of? Oh, uh, he, the the housekeeper from that show that was her was that her I it, I think I think I think it was we'll have to check during the break it was yeah it was I, I think okay. it was like her sister or something like that no, with the red yeah, hair yeah no wonder I always recognized her yeah yeah but I didn't realize that they were written out of the show they I were. thought they were still because I know wasn't that a big big deal that Suzanne Summers wanted to build onto the house to mm -hmm. create her own salon mm -hmm. and stuff like that and I think that was a big deal between her and Frank. Because I felt like she, they were in the newer salon. Unless that happened in season one, then yeah. Well, later in the series, her Bronson Pinchot joins the show, and he like is her partner for a while. And I'm gonna say he plays like a French guy, and he has that yeah. long ponytail. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. What was his Pierre? Was it no? What was his name? It might have been Pierre. I don't remember his name. Yeah, he was pretty funny too, because the way him, because then they they paired him with Cody a lot. <laughs> that makes sense. Oh, that'd be kind of annoying though. Yeah, yeah, but they did, and it worked kind of. Because he kept going to Frank to try to be more masculine. Oh, yeah. Like, and they would always pair them up, and like Frank would try to teach him how to be more masculine. It's like, of course, he would screw it. He, he became like the Urkel character. Yeah. The one that was... Over the he, top. Over the top, yeah. They had another character called Rich Hawk, who was played by Jason Marsden. Not not the actor James Marsden from X-Men and all that stuff. but and, and the only reason I even remember this guy, he was JT's best friend. But this actor would also play like a best friend or a boyfriend on Full House, and then yeah. he did it again on well, ah, I forgot what other show. Boy Meets World. He was uh, Eric Matthews' friend. Okay. If you saw his face, you'd remember. No, him. I, I know, I know yeah. who it is because he he ended up getting with uh, <coughs> the oldest daughter. 
with, in with, step uh, by step. with Dana. Yeah. Didn't he? Wasn't he also like DJ's rich boyfriend on Full yeah. House? Okay. Yeah. But no, he yeah. ended up getting with Dana because yeah. at first it was like a, a joke or something like that, and then she really kissed him, and then they started dating. Okay, because she hated him at first, yeah. right? Because yeah. this was like friend. later in the episodes, yeah, like in the seasons yeah. where they they ended up getting together. Yeah. I don't. Again, like most of these shows, I don't know how they ended. Yeah, some because some just ended. They like, did. They didn't have a real conclusion. They were just canceled. Yeah, I don't remember how this one ended. But yeah, I do so. remember them getting together and dating and all that good yeah. stuff. Yeah. So that, like I said, that's not the best show. I don't think that was the best show ever on TGIF, but that was definitely my favorite. I liked it. I liked it. I I, I liked the show. It was funny to me. Um, not my favorite, but it, it was a good show. Like out of out of almost all the TGIF uh, TGIF shows, the the big three that always stick out in my mind is Full House, Family Matters, and Step by Step. Mm-hmm. Maybe it's because it's the same premise <laughs> it, it, about a family, yeah. and they legit ran same types of episodes yeah. across all three shows. Yeah, they did. Um, but it fit with all, all three of them. So did that, they? that's why I liked it. Did they have a second stairwell in their kitchen? Yeah. They did? Okay. Yeah, because it was right behind. They had that that main table was like a picnic table yeah. that they all sat at. Yeah. And then right behind that was the stairway up. Okay, I almost and feel then like they had one in the living room, but that that show I don't think you ever saw upstairs. No, you didn't. You saw the backyard a lot because yeah. the backyard, the salon, and the in the kitchen uh, were the main the main shots of yeah. the show, and then you had a little bit of the living room. Yeah, and then you for some reason I remember seeing Cody's van in the backyard, like the driveway window. Yeah, that well far they, back. they had well they had a bunch of uh, a bunch of shots were in the backyard. Because they yeah. had another giant picnic table yeah. where they used to do stuff, but it always it always made me laugh because even after they added the salon, the backyard shot still same, looked the same, same size. Same. Yeah, same. it's like where did this go? <laughs> so that wrapped up the ninety one ninety two season. Ninety two ninety three season didn't didn't really add that many good shows. You, you still had Family Matters, you had Step by Step, you still had Dinosaurs, but you get a new show called Getting By which I alluded to in Family Matters, because this is the show that Tilma Hopkins left uh, Family Matters Oh, so this for. was her spinoff. This yeah. was her. It wasn't a spinoff. It was a totally different character and universe. She just left Family Matters to do this show. On the same network. Yeah, not, not Rachel. Not This wasn't Rachel. Oh, okay. okay a totally okay, different okay, character. Okay. Yeah. It was her and her best friend, who they were both widows. Her best friend was played by old uh, Cindy Williams, who was Shirley on uh, Laverne and Shirley. And they moved in with together with their kids because they were widowed and they couldn't afford to live on their own. I barely, barely remember this. I barely remember them moving in together, like the whole premise of the show. Mm-hmm. But I remember if if my parents didn't like it, mm-hmm. then I didn't, didn't watch, watch it. it. Because obviously, you know, when you're a kid, you don't get to control yeah. the remote for nothing. Probably only one TV in the house, no DVRs. Yeah. 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 That, that's the TV. Yeah. So it only <laughs> lasted two seasons, not yeah. long at all. Another one that debuted was called Where I Live, also only two seasons. This starred Dougie Doug, if you remember him. I probably know the face. He the was name. like a, a goofy guy. He, I'm going to say he had the long braids. Uh, oh, wait, I'm going to think I'm confusing him with that other guy now. I don't know, Dougie, Dougie Doug, if you look him up, he was kind of popular for a while. I think mainly with kids because he was kind of goofy. and It was kind of loosely based on his childhood in Harlem. Only two seasons, didn't last very long. The other show that debuted was Camp Wilder, only lasted one season. You would think with all the actors who were in it, it would have lasted longer because it had uh, Mary Page Keller from Ryan's Hope and Another World. It had a young Jerry O'Connell, a young Jay Moore, a young Hilary Swank, a young Jared Leto, and wow. you might not know the, the name, but you'll know the face for Tina Tina Majorino, she was uh, in Napoleon Dynamite. She was the, I guess, his girlfriend. The dorky one that sold like the bands with the side ponytail. Yeah, yeah. 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 And okay. then she she did have a little run on on Grey's Anatomy as they called her Mousy. She got electrocuted. That's how she got taken out of the show. She died. Man, that's called like Grey's. They be they be killing people off. Well, and that's the that's the, the plot of this show is that the main character played by Matthew, uh, Mary Mary Page. Keller, her parents died, and she was left in charge of her teenage siblings and, and the young girl, Tina. 
that show i don't remember at all yeah it, and they set up the house she she had the house as like a place with like a safe space for them and their their friends to hang out and they wouldn't be judged and it, it didn't last very long i try i i did look it up to you try did. to see an episode of it and i could like i made it maybe five minutes yeah sometimes the just, writing just isn't very good just not not what i wanted so the going to the 1993-94 season, this is the powerhouse season right here as far as debut debuts yeah, like, are concerned. So, so this is like the season I really remember. Yeah. I remember the and it, maybe it's this is where the, the, probably the season I realized TGIF was a thing. Yeah, was an actual like a block of TV <laughs> branded as something. I because I remember watching you know Full House, Family Matters, and stuff like that, but not being in school. Being like, oh, it's Friday. TGIF comes mm-hmm. on. I got my my reading button with my your book. My, 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 yeah, my pizza, pizza Hut. Hut. Yeah. My pizza. I'm gonna get my personal <laughs> size pizza. I'm gonna get to watch this. Like, like this is where I remember Friday night TV. I found my book at Pin the other day. Had I got two stars on it. You know, Uh-oh. you can have the little stars you yeah, can do. Yeah, yeah. I always used to get new buttons, but that one for some reason I actually got stars. So this one, you still had Family Matters. You still had Step by Step, but you added. Three new shows. You added Hanging with Mr. Cooper, starring Mark Curry, who played Mark Cooper, who he moves in with his childhood best friend named Robin, who's played by another woman named Robin, and her best friend from college, played by Holly Robinson Pete, who was in 21 Jump Street, if you remember that show. You don't remember 21 Jump Street? The show, not the movie. Oh, the show blows away the movie. The movie's great. The movie's funny. But the show, dude, you got Johnny Depp. You got Holly Robinson. I know know who's in it. I don't remember the show. I don't think I ever watched it. Mm, You got to watch that show. (laughs) Because they were were undercover in in the high school, and it was bad. (laughs) uh, So they all moved in together, and he moved in with them to, to help pay rent. He got a job as a substitute science teacher at the school where Robin taught. She was the music teacher. I don't ever remember what uh, Holly Robinson did. I think her name was Vanessa. He was a science teacher? I thought he was. No. Oh, yeah. Well, okay. In the what, first season. Because I thought he was like a basketball coach too, yeah. or a PE coach or something. Second season, he becomes the ba- the uh, basketball coach and the PE teacher. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's how he starts. Because what you probably don't remember, and she's not even pictured in, in the cast photo, is that his friend Robin leaves the show after the first season, and they bring in his cousin. Who was played by uh, Sandra Quarterman? Her name was Geneva. Geneva moved in with her daughter, uh, who was played by Raven Simone. Nice. After the Cosby Show. Okay, so she's a little bit older. Yeah, she's a little bit older. So they they moved in. They ended up moving in together, and Geneva, his cousin, gets the the music teacher spot that Robin had. And I don't even remember how they wrote off Robin. They said she moved. I don't even know why she moved. It was I mean, you know when they. I feel like I didn't come on board with this show until the second season. With with Geneva and yeah. Raven. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Because it's funny. You remember the little kid who was uh, Raven's best friend? His name was Tyler. Mm-hmm. Okay. He was kind of like the bud from the comedy yeah. show. His father owned the house that they lived in. He was their landlord. Okay. Yeah. Because in the first season, the original landlord dies. Tyler's father buys it. And didn't like Tyler play that up with Mr. Cooper and stuff on why he can hang out there and stuff like that? I feel like he said that a couple of times in yeah, the show. Yeah, but because Tyler's dad wanted to evict them, but Tyler liked them and right. persuaded his dad to let them all stay in, oh, the, okay. in the first season, yeah. And they get closer as the series goes on where he's not so much of a, a nuisance afterwards. But uh, your boy Omar Gooding, he was on the show. He was in the show, yeah. Yeah, he played Irvin. He was one of the, the students and uh, one of the basketball players. Yeah, and it's funny because that's what he was, and smart guy too. He was a basketball yeah. player, student. So he played high school kids for like ten years. Man, if if it ain't broke, don't don't <laughs> yeah. don't fix it, man. Yeah. That's how he made his money. And and Mark and Vanessa, they en- eventually end up together. Uh, they didn't. I think they got engaged, and they were going to be married in the next season. Had it had it occurred, had it happened, because they only ran like five seasons. But it was a good show. And fun fact: uh, I met Dean Cain. He's okay. he's good friends with Holly and uh, Rodney Pete. Really? Yeah, because of Holly, I think. What did he say? I think he said they went to college together. No, they like grew up together in grade school. How did that. that come up? 
Hey, Dean Kane, tell uh, me about your friends. No, I don't know how <laughs> we were talking about. It. I don't know how it came up. We we talked about the Astros. Because he didn't he throw he threw the pitch out against the Angels when they yeah. lost. Too, I told him I said I said, dude, don't go throwing out no more pitches. You stay <laughs> away. That was when the, the A's got real hot. I said, why don't you go in them A's games and throw out some pitches, jinx them. <laughs> I don't even know how he started talking about. Um, I think my wife asked him if he was going to do another Hallmark Christmas movie, and he he might have said, "Yeah, maybe him and and Holly are going to do one together or something." And I don't know. Maybe that's how I, really, I really don't know. I forgot he was in some movies. Yeah. So the next big show, the next big powerhouse, was Sister Sister. It ran for six seasons. Only two of them were on ABC. The last four were on the WB. Okay, maybe that's yeah. why I was like, I, re- I, I remember Sister Sister the show, mm-hmm. but I don't remember it on ABC. Yeah, just the first or maybe two. it's one of those things I don't remember what network is on. I remember just seeing, yeah, it. because then maybe they, I guess later they started doing reruns on like always syndicated like, for sure. Yeah, for like Disney Channel yeah. or something. I feel like they played it when they played Smart Guy. To try to get the brother famous and stuff like that. Well, yeah, they, I think they were back to back on whatever night on, yeah. on WB. So, so this show starred twins Tia and Tamara Mowry, who were two sisters who were uh, separated at birth. A little parent trap thing going on. It was it was exactly that. it was a parent trap uh, remake pretty much. One of them was adopted by uh, what was his name? The father Ray. 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 Ray was cool, man. Ray was Tim Reed. He was in WKRP in Cincinnati. Yeah. Wasn't he, he like a limousine driver or a limousine company owner or something? Maybe. In the show? I thought he was a DJ. Not in the show. Oh, on this, on Sister no, Sister. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Sister, oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. He owned, yeah. That that was one of the big deals is that he was, which, which one was he? was Tamara's father. And they kind of had money because he owned his own limousine company. It was pretty good. And Tia, her mother was played by Jack A. Harry from 227, and they are more poor. And they they met each other by chance at a department store. Yeah, because wasn't yeah. that in like the, the opening credits? The and girls I, like backing up to each other, like running yeah. into each other, and they turn around. Yeah, and then they, they had, but they had them actually meet in the pilot, and something's going to happen where like Jack A. loses her, her job, and she's going to have to move to another city. So the twins convince the the father to let them all live together right but ne- yeah. but neither one of them were were their parents right? no they were adopted they're the Both adopted, were adopted. Parents. Okay. yeah yeah and uh the father ray i want to say his wife died and i don't know if we ever knew what happened to jack a's husband or if there did ever we ever was... even find out what happened to their parents yeah at the end um they found out their they found their father and he was a white dude and their mother I, I remember him showing up yeah their mother died they the, the they were both like reporters or something and she got stationed like in the middle east or something and didn't he didn't know that she she was pregnant because they weren't together very long and then whenever she had the babies and gave them up for some weird reason there was no way for him to prove they were his kids so he couldn't get them because i guess this was before dna testing or, right i, I, guess I, don't, I don't know it's, it's i don't see how they couldn't prove because he was white, I guess. So. I, <laughs> I mean, guess that's, so. how I mean, you, that's how you got to prove. I, I, I guess, yeah. But it was a cool show. I I enjoyed it because they it. they broke the fourth wall a lot, and they would talk to you, talk to the audience, and say what was going on. Yeah. For most most of the series, remember they had their their friend was what was the dude's name? Roger. Roger, their Go best home, friend. Roger. Yeah. That was a, the, another little motto they had yeah. at the time. Yeah. And Roger, he had a crush on them. Yeah, both of them. Both of them. But do you remember, Roger was in the R&B group Immature. Yeah, because didn't they have him singing at like their birthday party or something? And they were like, and they, both twins kind of looked at him yeah. like, oh, well, they got game. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. After that, like he kind of matured. He wasn't as annoying. Yeah. And they kind of like, I don't think they ever dated him though. No, no, no. I don't remember them ever dating, but I do remember them. I think it was after that. That they kind of played up his yeah. off-screen persona. He became more the Urkel. To yeah, the yeah, Urkel, yeah, yeah, His Urkel. Yeah, yeah. They, play, they didn't yeah. make him such of a, a nuisance yeah. as in previous seasons. Yeah, because he was he was funny though. But I guess I know they went off to college, and he was still in high school. So that's how they kind of wrote him off. But I think his music career was taken off because they had that that song, that song "I Will Never Lie Again." Yeah, that was the jam back in the day. <laughs> <clears throat> 
So that was a good man. Oh, ABC should have kept that show. I don't know why they canceled it. Was a, it was it. a good show. Yeah. It was a good show. And then they, I feel like maybe they didn't, they didn't try to do that show again, did they? You know, uh, I just read a report earlier this year. Didn't they do something with the sisters? The sisters themselves have done like movies and stuff together. And I don't know, one of, isn't one of them on some talk show? Maybe it's the talk Maybe. Or I think one of them is also like in a show. It's off. Because, it, yeah, there's one of them that, that's in a show. They're not together on the show. And they're supposed to be rebooting the show somehow this year. Sister, sister? Yeah. And I don't think, I don't, I don't mean, no, I don't mean like a recasting reboot. I mean like a bring everybody back to pick up the story. Well, they did. Um, Tia and Tamara did a reality series yeah. in 2011 when I think they were, one of them or both of them were pregnant. Maybe like that's that. the Weren't show. they both pregnant at the same time? I think, I think they were yeah. both pregnant at the same time. I yeah. think that was the whole premise. Yeah, but I remember I remember uh, hearing about how they were going to bring it back and like as early as like January, Jack A is like, yeah, we're coming back. She was funny, man. Oh, did you ever watch 227? No. Man, uh, no. great show. You have to watch it. She no, was, she, she was, was always funny. She's always my favorite character on that. I hated Ray. You didn't like Ray? Because he was that uptight. Yeah, by the book kind of was. guy, and she was more of like the laid back one, always kind of playing jokes Ooh. and stuff like. <laughs> I loved her voice. Man. Ooh, yeah, she yeah she would always make that same face. Yeah, but yeah. I have a relative who kind of has a similar voice to Jackie. Really, she does. It's like. Ooh, Every time ooh. she like get caught doing something, yeah. Ooh. Ooh. yeah. See, in in two two seven, she had a catchphrase. There was the main character was uh, called Mary, and she she had that actress had played the my bad the maid in the Jeffersons. Okay, okay, and her name was Mary, and Jack Hay would go like, well, Mary, <laughs> Mary. That was another good one. Do, okay, do you remember the the sisters always had like a revolving cast of best friends? Yeah, Brittany Murphy was one of them early in the show. Yes, yeah, yeah. She was like kind of. She was almost a dorky, I feel like. See, I'm confusing her with her character in Clueless, so I'm not even sure. I just know she could tell them apart. Like, nobody could tell them apart. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And she's like, Tia, Tamara, why did y'all switch places and take that math test today? Yeah, yeah. Uh, I remember her. Yeah. I feel like she was. I feel like Brittany Murphy's character was kind of like, not really, not really dorkish, but kind of that that one off that, that those two were her only friends i think so yeah and that she was kind of one of those loner type yeah yeah gabrielle union was a friend later in the, in the series dwayne wade's wife yeah okay. you say dwayne wade or dwayne wayne dwayne wade oh you remember dwayne wayne right different world yes okay. yeah no, dwayne wade. <clears throat> uh, sherman hemsley played ray's father and he was kind of like a I don't think he was almost like a con man or something. He, him and Ray didn't get along very well, but I think I think Tamara kind of helped them fix their relationship. He went on very much. And, of course, their brother Taj, he was on there like three or four times, and he played a different character every time. He was uh, like a kid uh, visiting a, a mall Santa in one episode who didn't really do much. And, and one episode he played Tia's cousin. And then once they moved to the I WB, when he played the cousin. you do, yeah, because yeah. when he also called Todd, uh, his real name, I Taj? think it was his regular name. Yeah. yeah, it was really lazy writing. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Tia Tamara, <laughs> yeah. like they just changed yeah. the last name. Yeah, because they never said the last names. Yeah, it was always other characters that said the last yeah. names, and it, they, they that way they. I feel like it was a lazy writing. They were just saying, "Yeah, we're just going to like to hang with Mr. Cooper or, or Mark." Or maybe they just had bad memories and they had a hard time remembering. I mean, they were kids, yeah. so it's possible. And then he played his uh, what's the show you said he was on that you liked? Smart, the guy. smart guy. He played his smart guy character yeah. on one episode. Tj. Like, Tj. Yeah. Taj. Tj. Yeah. <laughs> Could call him Taj again. Yeah. Yeah. You. And what he did, he like tutored them for the SATs or something yeah, like that. Yeah, because I mean he was super smart. Yeah. So did you did you see? A couple years ago, he was on a show called Baby Daddy on that Freeform channel. Do I look like I watch Freeform? Uh, Freeform is totally different. Freeform, they ABC go Family? there. No, no. When no they it changed used their, to be. It I used know. to be. But when no. they changed the Freeform, they started doing some risk. Dude, yeah. baby, it, went, it went from far right to far left. Like, uh, no, no, opposite sides of the spectrum. No, like, uh, no. like ABC Family was. Yeah. Oh, not political, they, but no, 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 just, no, no, like, no, no. Yeah, I'm talking like opposite sides of the yeah. spectrum. Like, they went from family friendly mm -hmm. shows mm -hmm. to. You nasty, yeah. Yeah, yeah. something yeah. like, you know what? I'm going to change this station. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. You can't watch it with your kids, so that's a, that no, a good show. Him no. and the the woman from Reba who played Reba's ex-husband's new wife, she was- Barbara Jean. Barbara Jean. She yeah. had two sons, and one of them had 
knocked up some girl and the girl left the baby on the doorstep and so they were all kind of raising the daughter no, and no. Tosh was the best friend. Oh no, man, that was I, a great show. No, I, I stopped watching that. No. It wasn't, uh, what was the uh, the show with the girls and the murder mystery? The the main, the, like the most famous show ever came off of that channel. Something with uh, A. Um, Pretty Little Liars. Pretty Little Liars, okay. Yeah. It wasn't like that. Not, well, I never saw that show, so I really can't say. But it was like an adult sitcom. I, I, saw, was, I saw a few episodes and then Googled the <coughs> ending in the book and yeah. ruined it for you my were? wife. Seemed like a show she'd watch. She did. Yeah. Okay. And my and and, and one of my oldest, my Ooh. oldest did too. Is that is that a good show for her? To uh, watch it was it? one of those. Uh, <coughs> on the bubble. On the bubble. Okay. On the bubble. Tried to watch some other shows on that stage. I was like, nope, <laughs> nope, no, not watch Baby that. Baby that was a good adult sitcom. That could have um, been that could have been a, a later years TGIF or something. Nice. Yeah. So my wife's favorite show, and I will say was probably the best show TGIF ever put out. Started this year as well. It was called. Boy Meets World. Dude, love ran, the show. Yeah, ran for seven seasons. The only show that had its entire run on TGIF that wasn't a show that didn't last long, that, that got canceled. You know, it might be my favorite. Do I have to put Step by Step aside and say Boy Meets World is my favorite? I might have to. Boy Meets know. World was just good. It was good. It was good writing. I feel like it was good writing all mm-hmm. the way through. All the way through. Now, was there kind of plot holes, of course? Oh yeah, oh, <laughs> but yeah. I think it was. I think it was good writing all the way through the entirety of the season, even when they, even when they went off to college. Yeah, and it wasn't. It wasn't one of those Saved by the Bell moments where they went off to college and were like, "Ooh." Well, okay. If I have one complaint about this show, is it's called Boy Meets World, but did the boy really meet the world? Because his teacher. Taught him all the way through through high school, and then showed up in college. He had his best friend the whole time who went to college with him. His girlfriend, who he was with the whole time through grade school through college, he married her. His brother went to college with them. Everybody, everybody followed him all the way through. Did he really meet the world? Okay, maybe they prepped him for the world, and after the show's over, he meets the world. But he didn't meet the world. He was in his bubble his whole I mean... series. They dealt with issues throughout the entire show that I guess the world would throw at you. But he had, like you said, he had his little bubble of people mm-hmm. that helped him protect him or get him through the situation. Because mm-hmm. there were times, I mean, he fought with his brother. Mm-hmm. He fought with his dad. He fought with Sean, the best mm-hmm. friend. He fought with Topanga. Mm-hmm. There was that whole later episodes where, you know, he he emotionally cheated on Topanga. Oh, okay. Well, let's introduce the character because okay. I do want to okay. get to that. Okay. So the, the the main star was Corey Matthews, played by which Savage brother was he? Well, if he's not Fred, he's Ben. ben. Yeah. yeah. Ben Savage, Fred's little brother. His best friend was Sean Hunter, played by Ryder Strong. His girlfriend was Topanga Lawrence, played by Daniel Fischel. He had a brother named Eric, played by Will Friedle, who... He just got dumber as the show went on and the longer his hair got. His neighbor, who was also his teacher and his principal and his college professor, yeah. was Mr. Feeney, George Feeney, played by William Daniels, who uh, he was on St. Elsewhere, and he was the voice of Kit that I knew. on Knight Rider. Knight Rider. Oh, what, you what right. it, Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, Knight Rider. What does Kit stand for? K-I-T-T. I don't know. Cool car that no, David Hasselhoff. Did? It was uh, oh now I forgot it. I had it, all right. uh, no, it yeah. was uh, Night Industries two thousand. That's what it stood for. Oh. Night Industries two thousand. And fun fact, he also did just stop a uh, robbery. He did at yeah. ninety one years yeah. old. I just read that yeah. this morning. Yeah, I read that the other Mr. Day. Yeah. Feeney. Feeney. Yeah, yeah. That's yeah. It. that was Eric Matthews' catchphrase. That was Eric Matthews' catchphrase. Yeah. Oh, they all did it. They did, yeah. They, and they even did it in the the, the newer new show. Ones, yeah. Uh, the father was Alan, played by William Russ, who was like a horribly racist character in American History X with Edward Norton. Uh, yeah. Oh, I cringed when I saw the stuff come out of his mouth in that movie. That was that was <laughs> Mr. Matthews, man. He yeah. can't be dropping in bombs nope. and oh no, well that's oh bad. he did though. Yeah. Uh, the mother was uh, played by Betsy Randall, and you had a sister named Morgan who was played by two different actresses along the way. The, the first one was Lily Nixay from season one to two and Lindsay Ridgeway from season three to the very end. And when we talk about the new show, remind me to come back to talk about her because that's really funny. 
they they had a, a teacher in grade school called Mr. Turner. Mm-hmm. And the he cool was like the, the cool motorcycle guy yeah. with the longer hair. And yeah. he was always uh, wanting to challenge Mr. Feeney about the methods to teach. And Yeah. Yeah. And then he ended up becoming like like Sean's guardian. Guardian, yeah. 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 They had a real strong relationship. Yeah. I remember one of the episodes he gets in a wreck or something like that. And uh, in a motorcycle accident. Mm-hmm. And then that's like Sean doesn't want to see him or whatever. Yeah. And it's tough for him. And that was Mr. Turner's last episode. Was it? Yeah, it was. Like he never came back. <clears throat> huh. See, now I'm gonna have to go back and watch yeah. all these shows because they're just writing off people, and you don't yeah. really see where they get written off. But, huh. So you had Angela Moore, played by played by Trina McGee Davis, and she didn't come into like season five to the end. She became Sean's girlfriend and Topanga's best friend, and they had a friend Rachel, played by Matlin Ward, who uh, she would. Joined them in college. That was in college. That right? was in college. She was yeah. the roommate of Eric and Jack. And Jack, who was math, played by Matthew Lawrence, was Sean's half brother from yeah. his father, who you meet like later. They, yeah. they, they retconned that. Yeah, they did. Yeah. Yeah, they did. Way back. Yeah. And then they had Stuart Minkus. Minkus, played by Lee Norris, only in the first two seasons. Yeah, he was only like in like the elementary, the yeah. elementary school. Yeah. He was a smart kid that he, challenged he was, Topanga. He was the nerd. They kind of, they, they, in the later seasons, they kind of redid Topanga's character to be like more she nerdy. Was really weird, yeah. and nerdy at the very beginning, like a hippie. Yeah, yeah. Because her parents were. Yeah. Ah, uh, because her dad was one of the monkeys. Peter Tork. Yeah. Yeah, he's one of the yeah. monkeys. Yeah. And so, like, they made her like really nerdy, and like they would always compete against who is the best in class. But didn't he also have a thing for her as yeah. well? Yeah. Yeah, he really liked. Because Corey didn't want nothing to do with her at first. No, no, it wasn't until. She started having a crush on him, or he thought she had a crush on him, but she really had a crush on his brother. They were working on oh, some, yeah. they were working on some kind of project, yeah. and she was bringing over. He lied and said she was sick, and or he was sick, and she brought over like soup or some weird. Soup. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember her like making the dolphin squeak noise in one episode to him, or did he do that to her? I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. But I like I like Minkus. He was pretty cool. Didn't last long. Then you had Chet Hunter, which was Sean's father. Sean and um, I forgot the brother's Jack. name. Jack's brother, uh, brother, father. Yeah. He was an alcoholic, and yep. the mother had run out on them. So like, the reason Mister Turner became his guardian was because Chet took off trying to find the mother. And then, uh, she was in the hotel across the street. Was she that close? That's right. Well, that, yeah, yeah. One episode they realized she was just right across the street. Yeah. yeah. That 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 little that's gonna be a little trend you hear later in the show with people being across the street. Yeah. <clears throat> and then so after Mr. Turner's no longer the guardian, didn't he go live with the Matthews for a while before he goes back to Chet? I don't see. I don't ever remember because he, he lived with Mr. Turner, but then I think he lived at he just lived in the trailer by himself. Did he? Yeah. Because huh. his dad left and he just lived on his own kind of thing. Because okay. I know they did a couple of episodes dealing with that, like he was by himself. Yeah. And, it was just kind of he did his own thing. Because I remember Mrs. Matthews kind of pulled him in. Yeah. Um, yeah. When they brought in Jack, so all of a sudden he has a half brother from another mother, and he's mad at Jack for abandoning him. But you find out that, oh, you know, because Sean had written all these letters to Jack, because somehow he knew about Jack back in the day of when course. we didn't. Of course. But Jack's mother threw him all away because she wouldn't be associated with the alcoholic father. And so that was like, they butted heads about that until you find out it was all a misunderstanding. Yeah, of course. Of course. Yeah, you had you had Eric and Jack becoming best friends, living together, and they fought over Rachel yep. at first until yeah. uh, Eric decides he was just being competitive, didn't really have any feelings yeah, for her. That was so Because her and Jack yeah. ended up dating. For a while, yeah. yeah. Tor- through the end. It's funny. All these shows, you know, then you had, what was this? Uh, they had some bullies. They did, yeah, yeah. So it started out that what's his name, like Vinny or something, with the no. He almost looked like Fonzie with the Bo- black both jacket. Of them did. Both of them. They did. both did because then they had the two lackeys. <laughs> they did because the the big dude, you know, who his dad was played by, right? Big Van Vader. That's right. I think That's that right. actor's name is Ethan Suppley. Yeah, he was in uh, Mallrats and because then they they did a whole episode where where Corey's trying to help him build a relationship with his father mm-hmm. and talking to him about wrestling and all that because yeah. he was into poetry and stuff yeah. like that. So he runs from Tempanga's like 16th birthday party to, to the to the wrestling show yeah. to be on, on, on the ringside with him to develop the thing and then Topanga finds out and they end up, she's getting mad. She's like, 
Oh yeah, I see. I see what you were doing because he's on TV with the Vader mask mm-hmm. on and stuff. With and after then, Vader one. Yeah, and then they and then they end <coughs> with them dancing in the WWF ring at the end of the party because he pulled some strings or whatever. So <laughs> that was the two places at, at the yeah. same time yeah. episode, right? Yeah. yeah, that was a good one. Was yeah. it WWF or WCW at the time? No, it was WWF. WWF. That's it's cool. WWF. Yeah. I don't yeah. think WCW ever got into any TV shows except for that movie. Oh, Ready, the, to, Rumble. Ready to Rumble. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. I remember. Uh, so, so the first, the first bully guy. I don't remember his name. He Griff. Pa- well, Griff. No, Griff was the second. Griff one. was the second one. Okay. Harley. The first, Harley. That's right. Harley was the first. Griff that's was right. the second. Yeah, and and the other sidekick was. Um, I don't remember his name, but his the actors like Blake, Blake Sennett or something. He was in that that name. that group Rilo Kylie. Oh, that's nuts. Okay, so he's in that band, Rilo Kylie, with Jenny Lewis. Jenny Lewis was the redhead actress from True Beverly Hills, but she was yeah. in the Wizard movie with Fred Savage. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then I remember also, did you remember the episode? Uh, it was a college episode where Fred Savage is, like, hitting on Topanga. Yeah, and he's a professor, right? Yeah. And didn't, didn't uh, Corey, like, punch him? Shoves him through the door. Yeah, like, yeah. Shoves him through the door. It's like, oh, great, you just got yourself kicked out of college yeah. or whatever. Yeah. Yeah, that was pretty intense. So you want to talk about the emotional betrayal of Corey? Oh, of, of, who was what was the girl's name? Her name was Lauren. Yeah, they met. They went on some. Was it the high school? It was a skiing was trip. A yeah, ski trip. And, yeah. and he hurt his ankle, and she was just like talking to him and nursing or something. Could, then, she worked at the hotel, right? Yeah, at the yeah. cottage or whatever it was, and they just spent all night speaking to each other. Or yeah, something. they kind of developed feelings or whatever, and I think they. Did they ever end up like kissing? Because I, I felt like it was all emotional. I think they kissed. I don't know, guys. I know like the first night they hit it off, and then his ankle was okay. But then he pretended the next yeah. day it was still hurt and didn't go skiing with them. Yeah, because then it, because I remember Topanga found out because she didn't she write a note and leave it inside of his in his bag. Yeah, and she found the note. Yes, yeah, because they did kiss. They did okay. kiss. Okay. But then Topanga kissed another dude too. I don't know if it was around that time or later. Because that's when they broke up for a while. Yeah. And did they get back together in the Disney World episode? Or yeah. is that when they first got together? No, no, that's they did get back together because they weren't together then. Well, I remember there was at one point that it was early in the relationship where they weren't together <clears throat> and Corey was upset and thought she wanted to date Sean. But it was, it was right. Topanga's best friend and Sean mm-hmm. were working it out because they were – Eric was trying to get – he sold tickets to screen some horror movie at the school. <laughs> That's right. And it, was, it was their Scream episode, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then they tried to get – he to sell the tickets for that, and then they, they turned out where they were at. Sean and the best friend were set. Who – did Brittany Murphy play her best friend? Really? To I don't, best friend? Ooh, I don't know. I don't think so. Or she looked a lot like her. And it wasn't Angela, right? Obviously no, not. No, no, um, no, no, no. I don't remember. I don't remember now. Cause if maybe that's who I'm getting mixed up with of the dorkiness. Because I felt like she, if it was Brittany Murphy, she played the same character from Sister Sister. Could have been. Huh. I really think that might have been her because she was nuts. Yes, okay. it was Brittany Murphy. It was Brittany Murphy. It was. Okay, okay, there you go. Yeah, it was her friend Trini. Trini. Yeah, because they always like they. She was kind of like the kind of the same thing with Sister Sister. She was that <laughs> hanger on her. Yeah. And her and um. Her, her and Sean worked at that ploy to get them together at the Halloween movie. And then I know that they dated and then they went, she went off to Disney World and he was upset that she was going yeah, off without her. That's right. And then he tried to really force it or whatever. But, and then yeah. like the, he ch- kept trying to get to her, but like the rides were in the way. No, he kept, he kept doing stuff <coughs> and she, she kept getting annoyed because he had like a oh. person come down in the scuba thing. Okay. Yeah. Uh, and then I think the whole thing was he was at some dolphin exhibit, feeding the dolphins, talking to the dolphin about her, and she overheard it. And of course, he's leaving, and she's like, "Wait, Corey." He's like, "No, I get it. You know, I'm whatever. I'm trying too hard. Whatever. You just need to do your own thing." She's like, "No, I love you." And then yeah, but she does when they do break up because of the whole Lauren thing. Yeah, I think she does. I don't think they ever show the guy, but they talk about her dating somebody else. But yeah. They were broken up for a bit, though. So do you remember their first kiss on that episode? And that that episode, that was the one where he didn't like his curly hair, so he tried to iron it out. 
And mm -hmm. yeah, so he then he kind of gets ostracized by everybody and has to go hang out with the nerds with her and Minkus, with Topanga and Minkus. Okay, I do remember that episode. And, uh, yeah. I feel like they're protesting, like cutting down a tree or something, and they chain themselves up to the lockers. And somehow yeah. it's just them two at the end, yeah. and she gives them a kiss, and she's like, "Who? How, uh, would you ever think that you get your first Is, kiss?" Isn't that the same episode where Sean starts liking girls and Corey's upset with them for liking girls, and then he gets a kiss and he starts like laughing? Yeah, I don't know about the Sean part, but yeah, he did laugh afterwards. Yeah, because yeah, she's like, "Did you ever imagine you get your first kiss when you felt the least secure about how you looked or something yeah. like that?" Yeah. You remember the episode where they got locked in the AV room overnight, or they fell asleep in the AV room? Yeah, they were overnight? working on some project. Yeah, yeah, and everybody thought they did the deed, and they like. Yeah. And then Corey never denied it. And yeah. Then Topanga, everybody... and then that she kind of, what she, and yeah, that's when kind of Topanga took that turn. Yeah. From nerdy to like, yeah. woman, I guess. I you know, I don't want to say woman. She was still in like junior high or elementary, but she made that turn like, if you want me, Corey. You yeah, know, that's right. That type of as you were like. I thought this was a kid's show. Like, where are we going? <laughs> because she got all the, like, Corey got congratulated with, yeah. the, you know, the double standard. And she got, yeah, yeah, double standard. Yeah. 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 So, so we bring, you brought up the, the reboot or the spinoff that happened a couple years ago, Girl Meets World. Yeah. About Corey and Topanga's daughter, Riley, and her best friend, I don't remember her name. Sean, Sean, Sean Jr. No, yeah, yeah. She was kind of a Sean character. Yeah. A, kind of a poor, a wrong side of the tracks girl. And they had that character, Farkle. Yeah, that who was, was Minkus' like, son. Minkus' son, who at first it was pretty much a Minkus character. Yeah. And then you're like, oh, man, come on now. Yeah. So they brought back. They brought uh, everybody back. Well, uh, Linda Cardellini from Freaks and Geeks, who played Lauren at the, the ski resort. The one Did they, I, didn't see, I didn't see that Yeah, one. they brought her back. They went wow. on the same ski trip to the same place. And the daughter had the same relationship with her son. Well, I, okay, yeah. I missed that episode. Yeah, and she was also, like, trying to date her her male best friend, or they started having feelings for each other. The guy from Texas, right? Yeah, the guy yeah, from Texas, yeah. and so she meets this other dude, and they hit it off, and the same pretty much storyline happens, and, of course, Topanga's all, mm, 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 <laughs> that girl, mm, yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah. there's a lot of callbacks in that show. It was, it was, it was I, I, I enjoyed it. it was okay. It. I enjoyed it, yeah. I thought it was okay. It. We, wa we, we watched it, and... Uh, would record it and stuff like that and then they brought everybody back they brought back sean mm -hmm. because they had made the whole thing where sean was i think got engaged to uh riley's best friend's mom yeah they did and and, and then they brought back angela because they thought maybe he still had feelings for angela and she showed back up and was and she was already married or something like that i don't i barely remember her episode i don't remember yeah what she was she was only on there once but then they brought back the brother was it joshua because the baby, Riley, yeah. yeah. Riley's best friend was in love with him. Yeah. No, and, yeah. And, but yeah, she was like she was very attractive. And she so. was like thirteen or something, yeah, twelve, and he was in so college. Weird. Yeah. Yeah, well, I guess we forgot to mention how the, the Matthews parents had another baby towards the end of the run. Yeah. Trying to bring back the cuteness or whatever since Morgan had grown up and gotten kind of written off or hardly ever appeared. She hardly ever appeared. She kinda of did her own thing. <clears throat> yeah, she was there at the end though. Uh the, his brother Eric came back and he was like real goofy and weird and running for like a. No, he was. He was like a senator or something. He was a senator or a mayor. I, I, he was a politician. He was a politician for sure. Yeah, he was yeah. weird. He was running. Yeah, yeah. Because he, he came, was running for something. They did a whole episode about it, um, and the kids were talking about Eric or something. Yeah. And that's when uh, the little boy Tommy, from the episode from Boy Meets World, where Eric is. Doing that kind of big brother program, yeah. And he, Tommy, wants him to adopt him. That's right. And, Tom, and you know, that's one of those deep episodes where, <laughs> you know, Eric makes that decision like, uh, I really do want to adopt him, and but then he comes to the realization that Tommy has this better life with this family that over here or whatever. And then Tommy ends up coming back in Girl Meets World, and has that. It, it speaks up. Mm -hmm. About what the kind of man Eric is, yeah. even though he's not a career politician, yeah. he knows about values and stuff like that. So it's one of those, you know, I'm I'm not crying, you're crying episodes. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? It's like, nah, someone just cutting onions in here. I don't know what you're talking about. Making dinner. Yeah. 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 I, that's probably my favorite show now. It's definitely the best. I'll. I'll, I'll it still holds yeah, up. It like, does. I. I mean, they play reruns. I've probably watched it from its inception over and over mm -hmm. till now really mm -hmm. i mean it'll still come on 
I don't know what channel it comes on. I just know it's like in the Disney the, Channel, probably yeah, yeah. Disney Channel or something. Mm-hmm. It'll come on and I'll catch an episode. And it's really it's one of those shows that has those long storylines, but really you catch an episode here and there and still oh, okay, you can see it. So rounding out that season, dang, that's a good show. We could talk about it for yeah, another right. hour, couldn't we? So rounding out that season was a show called On Our Own, with Ralph Lewis Harris, who played the older brother of six other siblings uh, who were the actors and actresses were actual real life siblings whose name all started with the word with the letter j uh, one of them was journey smollett who played denise on full house michelle's friend yeah yeah if you see look, look above your head you can see she's the she's the little girl in the uh the bottom left corner of the oh, photo yeah, 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 yeah. you remember her now with the yeah, hair yeah 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 and the whole point of that show was they were trying to stay together, not have social services separate them after their parents' death. It it was I liked it, but it was a little ridiculous because the oldest brother Josh at one point dressed in drag and pretended to be their aunt to try to keep them together. And then, no. yeah, they it, it was canceled after one season. It it didn't catch on, even though I, I liked it, I enjoyed it. I feel like I, I remember seeing an episode or something like that, but more like probably not something. Yeah. That my parents watched. So uh, didn't watch it. Yeah, they were the Jericho family, and they always say Jericho power. That was their catchphrase. Okay. So moving on to 95, 96. You still got Family Matters. You still have Step by Step. You still have Boy Meets World. You still have Hanging with Mr. Cooper. You added uh, something we're not going to really cover because it's The Muppets Tonight. Everybody knows The Muppets. Muppets is what it is. Yeah. And the final show, Aliens and the Family, which... Oh, it was about like a single father who he was abducted by aliens, but then ended up marrying an alien, and yeah. they come back. I don't know, to try to be like a was it almost like a Brady Bunch with aliens? It was, it was like a step by step type deal okay. with the aliens. Yeah. So I know there was a, the, I think he had a daughter, and then the alien had a son and a daughter. Okay, but what always I they were like. The son and daughter looked really alien, oh. and the mom did not. Okay, like she looked like a, a <laughs> like a, she looked human, but like had Makeup, some prosthetics. Make, yeah, like right here, and that was it. Okay, and they're like, wow. oh, how how? Maybe they grow into it or grow out of it. Maybe yeah. only lasted eight episodes. So okay, yeah. yeah. Now I tried to like I. I don't even remember this coming on, but I did like YouTube it because mm-hmm. that's what people do nowadays is Google or YouTube, and and the episode. That I saw, what's his name? James Vanderbeek. Dawson's Creek? Yeah. Varsity Blues? Yeah. yeah. He was in it. And he was okay. trying to date the human daughter. And the whole, of course, it was all funny. The the alien mom and the alien daughter are all like, oh, yeah, he's so cute. He's so cute. And then like they run off and the alien daughter and alien mom are like, the alien daughter's like, I, I, I couldn't tell her that he was hideous. Like, <laughs> what? Like seriously, it's something like there's they have some pet. He's supposed to be some kind of dog. Ends up eating James Vanderbeek, <laughs> and like the dad and the and the brother have got to pull him out, and he just like takes off running. Of course, because uh, he's covered with slime uh, or whatever. It's yeah, it was I, it was terrible. Well, that's why it only lasted eight episodes. It was terrible man. Which leads us into the ninety six ninety seven season. You still have Family Matters. You still have Step by Step, Boy Meets World, but they added two new shows. The first one was Clueless, which was pretty much a spinoff of the movie Clueless with Alicia Silverstone. Wasn't she the only one recast, though? She pretty much. That character? Yeah. Stacey Dash, who was her friend Dion, she came back. Elisa Donovan, who played Amber, the redhead. Yeah. She came back. Donald Faison, who would go on to be in Scrubs, he came back. Uh, Wallace Shawn, the, the teacher who was the Princess Bride guy, he yeah. came back. Um, and his uh, wife from the movie... Twink Kaplan, she was uh, that's the actress's name. She was Miss Mrs. Geist Hall. They kind of got together in the movie, I think. The the teachers that they got together, and you had Rachel Blanchard recast as Cher, and I always tell everybody that Rachel Blanchard is my favorite Cher, and they think I'm crazy. See, I, I didn't even watch the show. All I remember about the show is they try to because the movie was came out the year before, probably two, year two or two, yeah, and they were trying to just. I guess capitalize on that, and, and yeah. they didn't. They brought back everybody but her, mm-hmm. and I remember watching like an episode or two, and I was like, "Eh." It was goofy. I I, I feel like well, this is ninety six, ninety seven. It was so a good. I'm it still... was a good. It was a good. Mo- it was a good movie. Like it was a funny movie, but yeah. I don't think it's something like the same type 
over a bunch of episodes just didn't work for me. You were a little young at the time. What, what hell were you? I was about 10, 11. Okay. Eh, I don't know. I enjoyed it. I thought it was funny. Like it was, it was, you could tell it was a different tone than the movie. But it also was a high school. Yeah. Was junior high yeah. Day, yeah. So, it was, and it was I mean, goofy and it was like, oh man, I don't know. I think, I feel like I watched it getting ready for school or coming home from school. I don't know. It was in syndication when I watched it most of the times. I didn't, I didn't watch it first run. Um, I don't know. Man. I enjoyed it. I, yeah. Did I like it better than the movie? Probably not. But, I, but I, I mean, full disclosure, yeah. I didn't really care for the movie that much. Okay. Like, I mean, it was okay. a funny movie, yeah. but it's not one of those. I, no. Yeah. I, I wouldn't watch over and over again. <laughs> like, no. It was goofy. You know, I think I watched the reruns when I was in college, and I'd like either go to lunch or get up for school. That might have been when I saw it and just thought, man, this is some cheese, but it's good cheese. Yeah. Uh, but Paul Rudd, Breckin Meyer, and Brittany Murphy did make guest appearances, just not as their original characters. Oh. Huh. Man. The second show was Sabrina the Teenage Witch. I like that one. It was good, yeah. I really liked it. I, Ran, liked, um, I liked it. Ran for seven seasons, four on ABC, three on the WB, which reminds me, Clueless only ran one season on ABC. The last two were picked up on UPN, if you remember that network. That's old school. That was, uh, I feel like Channel 9 or something crazy. I don't even <laughs> remember. It was Channel 20 on regular TV. Yeah, there you go. Because what, what is it now? I don't you, think it exists. No, Channel 20 is still out there. Oh, maybe. I think, I think Paramount owns that. Maybe. I don't know. UPN, nice. Yeah, because <laughs> I, I feel like SmackDown was on that episode. That, it that was channel. on UPN. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So Sabrina the Teenage Witch uh, starred Melissa Joan Hart from Clarissa Explains It All, and remember Drive Me Crazy? The movie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was an adaptation of the Archie comic book, Sabrina the Teenage Witch. Uh, she was a girl who, on her 16th birthday, discovered she had magical powers. And she lived with her aunts, Hilda and Zelda, played by Caroline Ray and Beth Broderick. And they had their cat, Salem, who could talk. It's like a black yeah. cat. And I didn't watch it too much. What I did saw, do I did see, it was pretty funny. It was kind of geared more towards kids, though. At I, least wa the, I watched it a lot. It, it, she was, what was, she had the, that friend and then that guy she dated. I think his name was Harley. Yeah. To something like that. But, I liked it. It was funny. Um, you had what was it? I forget which one. Hilda. I feel like Hilda was the the Hilda. Sorry, was the goofy aunt. She was. And Zelda was like the more, more uptight serious, yeah. and all that. Wanted to take her witchcraft serious yeah. or whatever. Yeah, I thought it was a good show. <clears throat> you know what's funny is before this show came out, they had like these movies on Showtime that was Sabrina the Teenage Witch that kind of led to this. It was Melissa Joan Hart, and it was, I think it was the same Zelda, but a different Hilda. But it was a little, I remember it being like a little more serious and darker than the show. I don't remember any of those. Yeah. I just remember when it came on, started coming on ABC, and yeah, it was kind of a big deal. It was. I just remember, like, I didn't, I, I barely saw any. I just remember that uh, Elisa Donovan from Clueless, she ended up being one of her friends, probably like, Maybe when they got to college or, or later. Yeah. And then they also had that one bully girl that wanted the the, the, the boyfriend. All she, this. she was a cheerleader. She have long dark hair? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, if it if it's who I'm thinking it is, it was Soleil Moon Fry who was Punky Brewster. Okay. Yeah, she was kinda like the bully that would always kinda yeah. give try to set Sabrina up and I think she always thought she was some type of witch or something, but never really found out what was going on. I don't yeah. think any of her friends did, and I don't even think the boyfriend did. Well, see, didn't they, like, they wrote off a lot of boyfriends and a lot of friends throughout the years? Yeah. Like, they didn't last very long. Yeah, and then yeah. I, and then when he got to college, it kind of slowed way down real quick. Yeah. So, we're getting to 1997 and 1998 season. You still had Boy Meets World. You still had Sabrina. But you added two new, uh, I guess they wanted to keep, like, a supernatural tone to the night. They added You Wish, which was like a 90s version of I Dream of Genie. I didn't watch it. I I don't even remember it. I just know, except this time from, from what I read, the the genie lives with a family instead of one a single man and the genie is a man in this. In this. I don't remember that at all. Yeah, because I think they were trying to play off that Sabrina was like bewitched 
was so this was like our dream I genie yeah and then you had team angel which had a weird premise uh both this and you wish only lasted one season and like the main character dies in the beginning and he comes back as his best friend's guardian angel see i vaguely remember this show i remember it coming out but i never watched it yeah i remember seeing a couple of episodes and the whole thing about it but yeah it was there's a reason it only lasted yeah. one season for but sure it, it had maureen mccormick who was um um Oh, the Brady Bunch what was her name. Marsha. Yeah, Marsha Brady. She was the mother of the the kid who was being guardian. I know from dodgeball. I'm just <laughs> when did that, she dodgeball? No, that was uh, the act, that was, was the one that like played. That was the one that played Marsha in the movies. Oh, that's right. Yeah, in the movies. Yeah, yeah. I would think they're the <laughs> yeah. same. So the final season of TGIF was ninety eight to ninety nine. You had Boy Meets World. I'm sorry, this is the second to the last season of uh, TGIF's first run uh, you had boy meets world sabrina the teenage witch you had two of a kind which was a new show with the olsen twins where they were separate people they were separate people yeah <laughs> their father was like a widow again with the they can't keep mothers alive can they with the olsen twins <laughs> you would think it would be the other way around yeah. And and the whole point was he he couldn't handle them his daughter so he was trying to find a, a a a babysitter for them who they probably ended up together in the end who knows only lasted one season so we'll never know and we really don't care do we I know yeah I don't care. but I do remember watching that show you did I okay. did watch the show yeah yeah because what you were like ten eleven right that's what you're saying yeah see yeah. Man, me and the Olsen twins were like the same age okay <laughs> so it wasn't creepy for All me right. <laughs> the, the next one was Brothers Keeper. And it was, uh, it just like talked, focused on two two brothers who didn't really get along. One was irresponsible. Uh, the only thing that really stuck out to me was one of the brothers was played by William Ragsdale, who was in Fright Night and Herman in Herman's Head, one of the first like Fox sitcoms. Only lasted one season. <clears throat> the next show was Two Guys, a Girl, and a Pizza Place. Ran four seasons. Yeah. Drop Pizza Place from the show name. Two Guys and Girls. Yeah. Yeah, Two Guys, two and, guys a and a Girl. Yeah. Uh, I didn't really watch it. I only know Ryan Reynolds was in it. You watched it. I, I, I did watch it. It was. It, it's one of those just kind of 30-minute goofy sitcoms. Like, yeah. there was really no... <coughs> that one, I think, even more so than the other ones, had no real long storylines that ran through it. Uh, it was just all goofy antics and stuff like that. But, yeah, I, I, the show was funny. I remember watching it for a while. Um. I don't even know if you could find seasons for it. You might. Probably on Amazon. Probably. Somebody's got it. Yeah. So we get to the final season of TGIF was 99 and 2000. You had Boy Meets World, Sabrina. You had the new show, The Hewleys, starring D.L. Hewley. Something I didn't really watch or know much about. No. I just think he moved his, his family from like the inner city to a more affluent place. And they, play, they played off on that. The guy that played Overton on Living Single was his best friend. Then you had Odd Man Out, <clears throat> uh, which was about a dude who grew up in a family of women. Didn't last very long. Only notable thing about that is Jessica Capshaw, who played Arizona on Grey's Anatomy, was one of his sisters. Is that your show, huh? Grey's That's, Anatomy? I, mean, I like that show. Because I worked in the hospital right when it started. Okay. And so I was like, oh, yeah, yeah. this is cool, man. This is cool. No, I cannot watch that <laughs> I try to lie because now my wife works in a hospital yeah. and yeah. we watch we watched something and she's like it wasn't even it wasn't even Grey's Anatomy it was Superstore <coughs> oh there was an episode where there's something happened in in the OR and she's like oh no don't <coughs> sterilize I'm like all right I checked out I can't do it <laughs> then you had uh, Making the Band which was a reality show they. I guess they formed and, and followed the band O Town O Town they which, got that one good song what was it. Uh, all or nothing. All or nothing at all. Yeah, okay. Uh, yeah, yeah, something yeah. like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I ain't gonna sing it. I know it. No, that was a good. That it. was a good song. I give it to you. I liked it. It was good at the time for what it was. Yeah. It's one of those you put on a mixtape that <laughs> you gonna give a girl. Yeah. Like, yeah. Or mix CDs. Yeah. <laughs> so that was it. That was the end of TGIF. Uh, they came back in in twenty the two thousand three, two thousand four, and two thousand five seasons, just briefly. Just like on a nostalgic thing, they had like the George Lopez show, uh, Hope and Faith with uh, Kelly Ripa, Faith Ford. The second season of that, they had Eight Simple Rules, Hope and Faith, and 
bunch of shows that you know we really don't know yeah you know the, out of all those shows i really like george lopez show yeah that was funny to me and even eight simple R- rules was good yeah uh that one was really good i really liked it because that's where you met like kaylee kuko yeah yeah and john one ritter of the daughter, john ritter but i like john ritter from news radio john ritter one not news Radio. was he on he's in three's company but that was There's, who was on one of them was on news radio um or maybe that's just where, where i remember What's his name from? I get him, John Ritter and uh, David Spade was in. No. Uh, oh, but he was after John. I get Ritter John. Died. I get John Ritter and. Uh, oh, Dave Foley. No. The other guy that died. Phil Hartman. Yeah, yeah. I always get him to them two mixed up. <laughs> I, I don't know why, because maybe it's just a kind of sense of humor from both shows. But Eight Simple Rules was really good because it had Peggy from uh, from the from uh, Married, Married Children, with Children yeah. in it. And then, yeah, David Spade came on later yeah. on, and the little boy, Rory, or whatever, yeah. the son. Yeah. And then they had in the old guy, the the grandpa. James Gardner. Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> like, he was funny. He was. And so, as, he, as being, like, a serious actor or whatever, like, yeah. he was really funny in the show. Like, Eight Simple Rules I really liked, and I would still catch it, like, on WGN yeah. or whatever when it comes in on back in syndication and stuff like that. Yeah. So that wraps up TGIF. We're going to... Let's get through the mailbag really quick. We're going a little long. Okay. I got to hit the bathroom. But we got in some actual questions in the mail, and they are about TGIF, so I don't want to pass them Is it from Big Papa Smash? Is that who we got a question for? No, no Big Papa Smash today. So the first question we have uh, is from Jay Hoover. No, not that one, Laugh Out Loud. I hate Laugh Out Loud. I hate that Laugh Out Loud term. Yeah. Which of the TGIF shows are ready for a reboot slash revamp? I happen to think Perfect Strangers would do well in this day and age. Um, well, Man. Sabrina came back on Netflix. It's a lot darker. Did I haven't it? watched it. Yeah, I, I haven't watched it. it. And I want to say it's the same people who do that Riverdale show, which I don't like. I don't like that show. But, I tried to watch a few episodes yeah. of it, and I checked out but early. I've, I've heard it's good. Um, like we said, Sister Sister's coming back. I want to see Step by Step by Step. The of reboot of Step by Step. I'd like to see that. Uh, Perfect Strangers. I don't know if would that do well. I mean, you can't make fun of people from other countries anymore. So no, I see that. There's a lot of these <coughs> shows. I really got to be careful because some of the humor you can like, even what was it? The Boy Meets World. There was yeah. an episode where the dad said something, and it kind of alluded to. The relationship between Sean and Corey. Yeah. And I was like, whoa. <laughs> like, you definitely can't yeah. say that nowadays. And to me, I mean, I mean, Boy Meets World already came back kind of with a reboot. Yeah. Uh, the one I, I, I would love to see how they would do it would be Family Matters. Just because I would want to see how they did those characters now. Obviously, we probably wouldn't have. Grandma Winslow, yeah. which was like one of the best characters, yeah. so that would be tough. <laughs> but t- to me, that would be a good one. Family Matters would be a good one. Um, man, uh, but like the way you said, in it like dinosaurs. Like to me, that was a funny <laughs> show, man. And it, I still <clears throat> how how were they people in costumes or because it they were they yeah. weren't animatronics. Like no, it was a funny show. It was probably Jim Henson that did all that or the, his the company because he was gone by then. Yeah. Well, speaking of Family Matters, the next question is about Family Matters. Okay. Uh, is anybody ready for a Family Matters reunion? The show used to be so good. Eventually, I lost track of it as time went on, and one day I went to watch it, and it was no longer on the air. What Happened by Alexis P. Oh, well, it jumped to CBS. That's, that's probably why, why you that's why you couldn't it. find it. But you said you want to see it. I think you, you answered that pretty good. I, mean, I, I, I would want to see it. Yeah. I, think it would, I think it would be good. I think it would be funny. Um Urkel would be old now. I think you could pick up kind of maybe where Laura and Urkel got together. Mm-hmm. And then, you know, Carl. I To be honest, you could probably work with not having to bring back either Harriet. Yeah. And like Carl's a, a, a widower or whatever. Yeah. Uh, you could probably play that off. But I, I, I'm ready for it. <laughs> I am. I am. I didn't think I was ready for the Fuller House. And I caught the first season. It was yeah. good. And to be honest, I just... Now there's too many other good stuff on regular TV for me to be watching Netflix. Yeah. I say that as I start watching House of Cards season six. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's going to wrap up our show today. Uh, 
please remember to like, subscribe, share, friend, foe, family member, whatever. Uh, catch us on social media, facebook.com slash manticore media LLC. We will air the live stream of this show there, and then you can pick it up on YouTube. That's the first and third weeks of the month. Catch us on Twitter at manticore underscore media. My name is Michael Navarro. Joined again by Anthony Gutierrez, a.k.a. Twan. Twan. <laughs> Thanks for watching. Bye-bye. Thanks. Hey, yeah.